Good morning. This is Tom Dorp. I'm the President and CEO of the U.S. Grains Council. I'd like to welcome all of you to this um, uh, event uh, at which we are preparing to provide you the results of our 15th annual U.S. Grains Council uh, China Corn Harvest Tour, uh, which culminates in a production estimate put together by a number of the participants on the tour. Um, in, in the room with me here today are my vice president, of member, the vice president of membership and operations for the U.S. Grains Council, Tom Slate, who was on the tour, Rebecca Bradder, the vice president of international operations, Michael Callahan, who's our senior director of international operations, specifically uh, uh, involved with China, and Eric Erickson, our special assistant for planning analysis and programs. On the phone, we have with us today Kevin Remp, who is on our Asia advisory team, representing the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Mr. Remp also traveled on the tour in the early part of September, so he is going to share with you part of his observations prior to getting into the estimates. We also have with us Don Hutchins. Don is the executive director for the Nebraska Corn Board, and he too recently re represented uh, his colleagues within the state uh, corn checkoff executive group uh, with uh, a group of them that also participated in the tour just in the last week and a half. Also from his uh, a sector and his colleagues participating on this tour were the execs from Iowa, Craig Floss, Laura Noth from Kentucky, and Jerry White from Kansas Corn. Before I turn it over to Mr. Remp and Mr. Hutchins for an overview of the tour, let me give you first just a bit of background on why this tour receives the attention it does. Tracking production, tracking the ending stocks, and even trying to assess a yield in China historically has been a challenge. As we all know, the Chinese government historically has not been transparent in its systems. It is now in the process of trying to, in my view, make its systems more transparent, but that still means that this tour is quite essential if we are to assess the opportunities in that market. Our process, that uh, developed by the U.S. Grains Council, has evolved over these 15 years, and we do believe it is reasonably reliable. We hope you find this information useful. We will open it up for questions at the end. But before I turn it over to Mr. Ramp, I would like to make just a few quick housekeeping announcements. There will be several ways to ask questions on the webinar system. And you can use the raise hand feature on the webinar toolbar, which will tell Ms. Caro to unmute your phone. But you can also use the question feature and type in a question. We will be sure that all questions are answered before we discontinue the call. And with that, I would turn it over to uh, Mr. Ramp. Kevin, are you on and are you ready to go? Yes, I am, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as Tom mentioned, this is the 15th annual China Corn Harvest Tour, and I had the privilege to participate in it and to be the representative for the U.S. corn farmer. The council has been conducting conducting this tour since 1996 at a time when it was only crop information on China being collected outside the government. This tour consists of two major surveys in the North China Plain area and in the Northeast China area. These two areas represent 71% of China's corn production and the remaining 30% is dispersed across the countryside so that it's very difficult to take a survey in that area. The groups were made up of grain traders, the feed industry, both U.S. and China analysts, the U.S. Embassy, and U.S. corn producers. We traveled throughout China the early month of September in the Northern Plains area and later on in September in the Northeast area. And during that time, more than 300 samples were taken in the seven major corn growing areas. Go to the next slide here, please. This is a map of, of China's major corn growing areas and minor. You can see in the dark shaded areas are the major areas, and the area I was in would have been the middle area 
on the slide of the Shandong province, the and the Hebei Trump province, and that is called the Northern Plains area. And then the northeast would be the Jilan and the and the Hilo Hilojiang. Excuse my Chinese if I say I don't pronounce these exactly right, but the Northern Plain, North China Plain area is approximately 30 percent acreage in those provinces, adding along with Henan. And this region is similar to the Western Plains of the United States. And when I looked at it earlier prior to going, I just kind of crossed it over from the globe and it was kind of like a central Missouri area. So it was, that would give you an idea of it was a longer growing season, but a lot of the sampling we were doing in that area was a double cropped corn after winter wheat. So they were using their shorter season hybrids, but it was planted probably around the 1st of June. The Northeast China accounts for approximately 37% of the acreage and includes the provinces of Hilajang, Jilan, and Liaoning, and then the Inner Mongolia. And this re region is roughly similar to the Northern Midwest. So uh, when I looked at it earlier too, It'd be like in northern Iowa to central Minnesota area. Both of these tours included about three to four groups, and we were in the field about four days, four to five days. And uh, like I said before, I was in the Shandong area, and it was what I noticed in that as we got further inland, the soils became a little bit better and that was very evident on our samples that we were taking. And as we go through this, we determined that China will produce a bumper crop this year with a production estimate of 167 million metric tons, or roughly 6.6 .6 billion bushels. This is considering the projected corn harvest area of 76.35 million acres which comes out to roughly almost 86 bushel an acre. And now I will turn it over to Don Hutchins and he will discuss how yield and production area is determined. Don? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, the process I'm going to explain is identical to the way that we would estimate uh, yield potential in our own corn harvest tours. As Kevin noted, groups travel through the seven major growing areas to determine yield acres and production. Groups average about 10 to 12 samples per day. In order to estimate yield, groups measure stock spacings, row spacings, ears per plant, the number of kernels per ear, uh, maturity and specific problems including lodging, pest presence, weed pressure, or, uh, or mold. Corn samples are collected from each sample location and are tested for moisture and density. Between 25 and 40 percent of the sample sites are located by GPS, and the rest are identified by map waypoints. Uh, for next year, we would suggest that uh, using GPS on all the, the sites and locations. In addition to collecting samples at most stops, teams will meet and talk with farmers to identify a relative crop quality compared to the previous years. Yield numbers are evaluated based on the samples. A summary of the conversations with the farmers and the analysts of the members of the groups. An assessment of the sample is provided for the review and evaluation, such as identifying the number of samples, plants per hectare, ears per hectare, a ratio of ears to plants, and average kernel per ear and estimated average yields. Since samples for the year have not been tested, sample weights are used for the previous year. The participants discuss farmer comments and independent assessments of the crop and come to a consensus on numbers with respect to yield and area. Production is then calculated based on the yield and production area. I have to admit uh, these farmer visits were very revealing. Uh, we did have the opportunity, uh, the four state execs, to, to visit with three very different producers. A 55-year-old man that w had three hectares and shared information about his crop his crop was hand harvested at a cost of about 2,200 yuan per hectare. Then we had the, uh, the delightful experience to meet a 78-year-old woman who had her daughter's crop harvested and piled by her home 
and uh, she now adorns a Kansas corn cap. A younger producer that was having his crop mechanically harvested at a cost of about a thousand yuan per hectare using a John Deere tractor and a two row picker. Uh, next slide, uh, the estimates for growing areas start with a report from provincial and national statistics bureaus. It is Chinese practice that these numbers may be adjusted either up or down with policy objectives in mind. As a result, official changes in growing area do not necessarily reflect changes in actual production area, and actual production area is really difficult to ascertain. That is one of the key reasons the council began doing an independent survey 15 years ago. It was interesting, some Chinese grain traders uh, complained about the accuracy of U.S. crop uh, statistics, but were very quick to admit it was far better than any they had. So the value of the council data collection is far better than whatever has existed before. The corn tour participants estimate production area based on official government statistics, independent analysts, numbers and discussions with provincial grain bureaus and government officials. Only growing area is tracked, there is no separate harvest area and little abandoned area as the cost of harvesting generally only includes labor since between 60 and 80 percent of the crop is harvested by a hand. We did discuss with area farmers the fact that there may be some cross loss with mechanical harvesting versus hand harvesting. On the last day of the tour, uh, you can, next slide, shows uh, the, uh, the group uh, that was trying to come up with uh, numbers and uh, the members of all the corn tour groups uh, review and evaluate estimated growing area and yield numbers. This process allowed everyone to debate uh, how each provincial crop looked compared to the previous years and probably the toughest debate was on planted acres since it's very difficult uh, to know um, from any government statistics uh, what those planted acres might be. Uh, next slide, pictured here is a um, Chinese government reserve harvest facility which you can see is empty. Uh, our area of, the of northeast China was uh, just getting into the 2011 harvest what storage we did see was corn piled at individual farm locations and local pricing for the corn uh, was very interesting. Uh, the, the numbers we heard was around $10 per bushel. In spite of the current economic pressures, there is evidence of strong and increasing demand for higher quality protein diets. And with a population of 1.2 plus billion people, and uh, changing income levels, uh, you can see the, the demand for higher quality protein is going to continue. The five to six year trend shows that demand exceeds production. All around, government, private analysts, and the council say this is a good crop, and uh, by everything we saw, we, uh, we concur. The Chinese typically are inclined to maintain a higher level of stocks, roughly 25%. And uh, the council believes the 2011 production will account for 14 to 16 percent ending stocks. Therefore, uh, China will need to import to rebuild those, uh, those carryout stocks levels. Outside of considerable lodging, the 2011 crop impressed our state exec group. Uh, you could see the obvious hybrids that could not hold up to wind and excessive rain, uh, but yield loss will not occur uh, if it was hand harvested. I'll turn it back over to Tom, but uh, on behalf of the four state execs of Craig Floss from Iowa, Lori, uh, Laura Noth of Kentucky, and uh, Jerry White of Kansas, I, I do want to say thanks to USDA, uh, to the U.S. Grains Council, and our respective state boards of Nebraska, Kansas, uh, Kentucky, and Iowa for allowing us this uh, unique opportunity as state execs to compare what uh, we do in the states to uh, what the council and, and uh, the independent uh, analysts are doing in China. So, Tom, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Don and, and Kevin as well. We really do appreciate your assistance and your involvement in this. Uh, it does uh, provide a level of validation that we think is essential to uh, uh, making certain that our numbers are at least uh, uh, reasonably uh, uh, accurate and, and well-respected. Uh, as Kevin has already indicated, 
the council estimates a bumper corn crop this year in China with a total production of approximately 167 million metric tons or 6.6 .6 billion bushels. Now, this would be a record production based on our long-term trend assessment of their crop size. Those of you who have analyzed this closely realize that China, the government uh, itself, is estimating a yield of 182 million metric tons. Therefore, there is some significant difference here. However, their number would be a record yield as well. So from that standpoint, in, in anyone's vernacular, they are uh, embarked on harvesting a record crop. Uh, we believe that this has been taken off of 30.9 million hectares, or roughly 76.35 million acres. Um, <clears throat> these numbers uh, and acres that have been collected, uh, we have worked with a number of private uh, Chinese uh, uh, analysts as well, and a lot of these numbers are derived from discussions with provincial leaders, and we believe that this gives them a uh, uh, a better level of accuracy than perhaps uh, what we have historically tended to receive from the uh, uh, federal government itself. The yield obviously translates to about 5.4 tons per hectare, or as Kevin said, about 86 bushels per acre. Our calculations, uh, if you go to the next slide, our calculations uh, and estimates suggest that domestic corn production in China has exceeded domestic use six of the last seven years. And this is clearly why China has emerged as a buyer of corn. And this has, uh, uh, I think, uh, quite appropriately reflects uh, why uh, uh, the world is struggling trying to get their arms around what exactly is going to be the long-term demand over there. Uh, we all concur generally that the domestic use uh, in 2010 and 11 was about 163.5 million metric tons. We believe in 2011-12 it will be approximately 170 million metric tons. If our production estimates are correct, uh, they will <clears throat> once again exceed uh, their demand by approximately 3.5 million metric tons. Or, I mean, their demand will exceed their production. We believe that over the last uh, seven years that China's cumulative consumption above our estimated production of the Chinese crop amounts to approximately 40.5 million metric tons. And if that's the case, uh, and if our production estimates are close relative to what the China government says they have produced, we also believe that their uh, uh, production has exceeded uh, our production over that same period of time by approximately 97.5 million metric tons. So. Uh, with that, uh, I would uh, open it up. Excuse me, we have one more chart on here. And uh, this is the chart that I just uh, uh, gave you. But you can see that the China government uh, uh, production estimate for the 2011 12 crop is 182.5 million metric tons. The U.S. Grains Council is 166.6. The gray area is their domestic consumption, which we believe in 2011-12 will approximate 170 million metric tons, or they will again exceed their uh, 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 production with demand by about 3.5 million metric tons. So with that, we would uh, open it up for questions. And Mari, I would uh, turn it back to you to manage this. So there's two ways to ask a question. You can use the raise hand feature on the webinar, or you can manually type them in. Uh, when you raise your hand, I will unmute your phone and allow you to ask the question. Uh, the first question comes in from uh, Todd Gleason. Unmuted. Todd, your phone is now unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question.
Um, <clears throat> we have uh, been suggesting, based on our best assessments, that uh, the demand for China corn in the coming crop year, the uh, year beginning October 1 through, uh, quite honestly, uh, it gets a little bit complicated, Todd, uh, probably through uh, December of 2012, is going to be between 5 and 10 million metric tons. Uh, we all know that there were approximately 5 million metric tons uh, that were listed for sale by USDA, but to unreported destinations. Uh, we believe that a good share of that uh, is China corn, and uh, we believe that the uh, uh, estimated carryover, according to our calculations, is more like 24 million metric tons, and uh, we believe that uh, their, their uh, uh, focus is somewhere between 35 and 40 million metric tons. So uh, we think uh, an estimate of their import demand from uh, all markets around the world will be between 5 and 10 million metric tons. Yes, and, and excuse me, that would be 200 to 400 million bushels. Um, I would actually turn that over to Mr. Callahan, who has uh, been involved in that for some time. Michael, do you have uh, an assessment? Well, the the uh, in, term, in terms of of yield, uh, they seem to be uh, staying fairly constant. Uh, there have been uh, in in some of our previous calculations, I think. Uh, a couple of years ago, we estimated that the yield could have been closer to 89 to 90 bushel to the acre, but uh, uh, they don't. Uh, th these yields don't seem to be uh, going up the way that uh, the one might expect them to, which seems to suggest that uh, while there while there is a certain amount of uh, new agronomic practices being put in place and and maybe uh, increased plantings per acre. But we're looking at the country across the board, or the the, the crop uh, in general, you probably don't see uh, all of these, in, uh, very many of these improvements uh, being being put in place. We also uh, would point out, Mr. Gleason, that uh, I believe the average plant population of all the samples taken this year were 23,000 plants per acre. Um, and um, they are using, by and large, uh, uh, older but yet single cross hybrids. So uh, th those yields are probably reasonable. Uh, and that was Mike Callahan, just once again, Senior Director for International Operations. Uh, last name is spelled C A L L A H A N. Well, um, if, you, if you have the need to contact the Grains Council, please contact me. My um, uh, email address is on the screen here. Um, the the webinar copy of the webinar can be found later today on our website. There's also photos being uploaded um, on our Flickr account. That's uh, flickr.com backslash USGC. And as always, feel free to contact me with additional questions. Thank you for joining us.